production. Um, and I have all the books here. I'll, I'll hold up uh, in a few minutes here just to show you. But thanks, everybody, for uh, joining today. This is very humbling to know that people are interested and actually want to hear what I have to say. So as I do with my books, I'm going to do my best to make this very fun and entertaining. Um, I'm a pretty sarcastic person, but I've always been very witty and uh, you know quick on my feet. So I've kind of applied that into the books, but also just how I approach everything in life. Um, so a little about me, I'm originally from Hickory, North Carolina. This may come as a surprise to you all, but I was not a valedictorian. Um, my spelling is not very good. Neither is my grammar, but it's a great thing for editors because they can fix that stuff. I am just creative. So um, I've always loved hip hop music and I've always had an ability to rhyme and make things make sense. And my whole life, I would be, you know, creative and, you know, was always concerned with making others laugh and have a good time. But I just never really got past an idea stage in my life. I, I just had, you know, on my phone, like most of you all, you know, probably keep notes. So you remember things or if you think you have a good idea, you put it in there to kind of stick with it and see what you can make um, happen. And I just never got anywhere. I just was always the idea person and never a doer. And in 2020, my wife was going to London for three months for a project for work. And I was going to be home because we had our, um, or we still have him, yesterday was his birthday, but our 85 pound fur baby uh, named Theo, who is actually uh, Doug the dog in my first book, uh, Whose Hoof Is That? Um, the reason Theo isn't in there is because I used the letter T um, for one of my friends, actually two of my friend's kids, which I'll get to that in a little bit too. But um so I said, you know, she was going over there for three months. I was going to be at home, you know, have, you know, my evenings just by myself. And I said, you know what? I'm going to figure this out, right? I'm not, I'm not writing a novel. I'm not writing an autobiography. Um, I'm writing a children's book and it's for pure entertainment. The goal of each of my books is to not only entertain the child who's being read to or who's learning to read, but to entertain the parents, the grandparents, aunts, the uncles, friends, cousins, whoever it is that is actually reading to uh, the child, I want it to be entertaining for them. There are millions of children's books out there, super competitive industry. Um, I haven't figured out how to retire from it, but if I do, you better believe I'll be back on here and I'll, show, I'll share all the secrets to this. Um, but people overthink everything. And I think especially when it comes to, to doing a children's book. And, you know, I started doing this um, in, in 2020. I started writing in January the first book, um, which I'll show you here. It's called Whose Hoof Is That? Now, this one is about the AB, let's see which one I got here. The ABCs, animals, what kind of feet they have. Every one of my books rhymes from start to finish. They are funny. They're witty. For anybody who ever buys one, whether online or in person, I always sign it and I'll make it out to um, whomever as well. Um, but this one took me about two months uh, to write. And then I had no idea what I was doing, um, had no idea how this process worked. And sometimes you get a little luck and, and you have friends that help you along the way, too, that you just meet. Um, and I think one big key that has helped me throughout my life and will be definitely something that I share with, you know, my son as he gets older is how important communication is to be friendly, to be kind to everyone, to never burn the bridge, but stay in communication with people and talk to them. And you never know how this will, you know, uh, pay you dividends later in life. And a little bit of that worked for me. But Obviously, when you're doing a children's books, you need illustrations. Well, I'm creative and I can put together a description for what I envision. But, you know, when it comes to, you know, putting maybe marker to paper, um, no way. Just not my skill set. Um, you know, if I had to draw something out, we're playing Pictionary. Let's just put it this way. Like our team would lose every time. You'd have no idea what it is. Um, but I am resourceful. So. For the first book, um, my wife and I got married in Savannah, Georgia, and when we did, we used Savannah College of Art and Design to um, for a videographer. So we put a posting up. You know, we thought it would be a great opportunity for a student to make some extra money. Plus, they could use it for their profile. So I went back and did the same thing for an illustrator for my book. 
I did some research on illustrators throughout my process and learned that, um, you know, it can cost you up to $30,000. Now, I don't know who has $30,000 for an illustrator. Um, I definitely don't. Um, nowhere near that. So, you know, again, getting creative. And this is why I went the route of um, the, you know, art school. So if anybody's thinking about doing that, it's a great resource. You you know, it's important to make sure that you own the artwork at the end of it, but, you know, allow the students um, to use it for their profiles to help them progress their careers as well. So I had a few students that, um, you know, applied for the, you know, the role and sent some artwork. And again, going back to the communication thing, most of them weren't really great with this and response. I, I would, you know, ask to say, you know, I love your work. I'd love to set up a meeting to just chat with you, whatever. And I wouldn't get a response. But um, the one I went with, her name is Andrea. She was just so professional, held me accountable, you know, would ask goals. We talked through everything, set timelines and a plan. And again, I had no idea what I was doing. And as I talk through this in each of these books and how it went, I think it's really important to like one thing I, I really want to convey is that you can do this. Like you can write a children's book, you can make this come to life. Like I, you know, I, when we were planning this, I was joking and it was like, I'll show people my SAT scores if you want to see it. Like I never claim to be the smartest person in the room, definitely not the tallest and for sure not the person with the most hair. But you take strengths, you understand if you believe in yourself and you're willing to take the time and just do it as a process, you can figure it out. And the one bit of advice that I always tell people, every time I'm selling books, people want to come by and tell me, you know, this idea they have for a book. 90% of people, it's about their dog. And I love my dog. I have another book in the works that has him as part of it. Great. Do it. Um, if you don't write it first, you are going to come up with excuses why you can't do it. And I think that's the biggest thing is like, if you can write it, then you can figure out all the steps the rest of the way. So doing a little research online, asking questions, you know, I've, I reached out to other authors to ask. Um, I ended up going the self-publishing route with all of my books um, for a couple of reasons. One, as most of you may know, if you've ever looked into it, that unless you go like, you know, unless you get with a publisher and somehow you get on the New York Times bestseller list, like it's going to be very hard uh, to ever recoup your money. Where if you go the self-publishing route, it's, you know, it's more of an investment on you, but um, you can make back your money. The more books you order, typically, the less you have to sell to break even. Um, I have I started this in um, November 2020 is when my first book released. Since then, I have released two more. Um, so book one, Whose Hoof Is That? About ABC's animals, what kind of feet they have. Book two here, Billy the Dentist. Uh, this is your much shorter, let's get it done, let's get them to bed, but let's encourage them to take care of their teeth. Uh, this was actually a project I did for a friend of mine who um, is a dentist in South Florida, and this was for his practice. And then book number three, um, which I just got about 10 days before Christmas this year, is called The Best Bagel Book, about all the different flavors of bagels. They're all characters, they all rhyme from start to finish. Um, and again, meant to be funny, witty, and entertaining. Um, so every book has uh, a different illustrator, and that has been intentional up to this point because I like to, you know, I find different people from Instagram, from referrals where somebody said, oh, I use this person, or I looked, or, you know, you start following some of these hashtags or, you know, how the algorithms work, and they'll start serving this stuff to you. And then you just reach out and literally, if you want to do this, if you if you ever want to write a children's book, you know, be confident in yourself. Like you don't have to know everything. You can figure this out um, and just ask questions. Like if you don't, the answer is no. Now, I understand for some people this you know, is a little uncomfortable. For me, I could talk to this wall for the next 30 minutes and still like accomplish it and, and um, you know, make sure I, I get my questions asked. Maybe not answered at that point, but um, it's. I think something that's just important throughout this process. And, you know, I, again, when I, I sell a lot of books in person, um, you'll see, I also sell them on Etsy as well. But when I sell in person, I want this to be an experience for someone. And it's 
not just another book. Like it's me that's selling it. You understand who I am. You can understand how the book is supposed to be read. The first one actually comes with a free audio and video of me reading it to 90s hip hop music while the artwork comes across the screen uh, that I did at a podcast studio. Again, that didn't cost me anything. If you just communicate and you reach out and ask questions, you'd be surprised sometimes what you know people are willing to do or help you out with. And sometimes it's self-serving for them. Um, but sometimes it's just to see, you know, how it comes to fruition. Um, going back a second to the self-publishing side, I don't sell on Amazon. Um, I know that's a question a lot of people have. I've thought about it. There's ways to make it a bestseller on there, but it's only for a short period of time. The reason I chose not to uh, was for two reasons. One, the cost to produce the books was unbelievable it was going to be so expensive the way i did my research and i just i couldn't afford to do it um and two even you know if i could have from that standpoint um the amount of fees they take from everything you know my books are 15 dollars a piece i wouldn't have been able to i don't even know how many copies i would have to sell to recoup just my cost i had somebody a uh, lady call me yesterday it's a true story she has her books in FAO Schwartz up in New York. Her book is about um, uh, something about Central Park. And she was reaching out to me to ask about production, um, where I produced the books and, and the company I work with offered me as a reference. And she was learning about it from a timeline, but she was telling me how long she's been doing this. And even though she may sell 200 in a day um, at FAO Schwartz, that's not every day, but I guess on like certain, like, you know, holiday times or something she might. She still has never made up her money and she's out of books and has to go recoup where I can tell you I broke even on my books within the first four or five hundred. Um, and I always order at least two thousand copies at a time. Um, and I, I do produce the books overseas. Uh, everything else is done here. Um, you know, I would recommend if you're ever thinking about doing that, look into it. There is pros and cons to everything, you know, especially from, you know, a timeline and planning and um, knowing your seasons as a side note for anybody who's, you know, I see a couple of people like they're taking notes. Um, if you want to have your books by the holidays, make sure when you go to send to print, I would suggest making sure you have everything by October at the latest delays happen, depending on where you live. If you're, you know, on the West Coast in the U.S., you know, I know there were some delays over there allow plenty of time for yourself. Holiday season is the busiest season. I have learned from my experience selling books. Um, uh, from about January to March, it pretty much just dies off. And then it picks back up, but finding your local markets is another thing um, and, and getting in and you have to be set up as a business and that's a whole nother, you know, step as well. But, um, you know, you can sell your book. You can have the greatest book ever, but, you know, how does it look? What's the presentation like? How do you sell it and offer it? Like just because you have a book and you put it on Etsy or Amazon does not mean you're going to sell, you know, tons of copies. Like you, you likely won't. I mean, you have to make the effort to do it. Um, I, you know, again, started first book November um, last year at let's see when was it i haven't actually officially announced this i did i did an interview with our local news here that's supposed to be airing in the next few weeks we'll see when it happens but i have sold over 5500 copies of my books um just doing it locally and a little bit sure to toot my own horn but like i bust my tail to do this i'm out every weekend in the summer in the cold hot standing for hours like I've got a bad back. I'll tell people that, you know, sometimes you get to tell people whatever it takes to sell the book. You know, if you tell me, you know, the ABC books, I always ask if somebody's, um, you know, what their the child's name is. If the name is in the book, then almost a sure thing. People think that's the coolest thing. I can sign it, whatever. If it's not, I ensure them that every letter of that child's name is in that book. So if you think about it, it is an ABC book. Every letter should be in there, but it's all in your perspective and how you, um, you know how you sell it. And again, for me, I'm about humor, making things joke. And if somebody walks by with a golden retriever, I tell them golden retrievers love these books. If they just had a baby, it makes a great gift and it will help people with academic, athletic, music scholarships. This is a great place to start, like whatever it is. Obviously, it's a children's book. You know, I, this isn't the, you know, the dictionary or a book on science. This is, again, entertainment. But I do try to make it where they can learn something. So 
you know, with the bagel books, maybe it's about, uh, you know, flavors they haven't heard of. If it's the ABCs, it's about their feet and something you didn't know about animals. Or, you know, did you all know that um, a sea urchin has uh, 10 feet and it's five paired rows to be exact, two on each side. Um, and it helps them st stick to the ground so they won't float away on their back. So these are the kinds of things I just try to incorporate in there. But again, it's pure entertainment value. Um, as well. And then, you know, it's where do you want to go with it? It's advice somebody gave me. I've done three books. I have three more in the works, but I'm not going to even try to bring them to fruition until I've sold off more of what I've done. Um, I just have a garage full. So I would say if you're going to order books, make sure you have a place to put them. Um, essentially, if you have to go rent a storage unit, that's just taking more away from you. If you have a garage, I set them under a table in my office at one point put them under your bed, sleep on them, whatever you got to do. Like if you can keep them in your house, that's, that's the best way to do it. Um, but it's really exciting. And for me, I love the transactional process. I love when somebody comes by and buys it and knowing that I got to do something that makes people feel good. And it's a piece of me. And it was an idea of somebody who was an average student at best um, is now an author and a writer, which is still so weird for me because I still have to have my wife like correct a post on social media for me because I, you know, it's just not my, you know, not my cup of tea, but you know, you can have, there are editors, there are illustrators, there are people that will help you format. There's something out there for everybody. You just have to be willing to search a little bit. And sometimes it's just getting over that hump. So, um, really making sure to just write it is the, is the biggest thing. And then from there, um, you know, you can figure out each step. Um, let's see, I don't know how, how we've done time-wise. I, I can just talk forever. Um, I get excited about this, but uh, the other thing I would tell you all, and then I, maybe we want to go to questions or something. Um, you know, my information will be on here. You can reach out to me. I have put together a course. It's not finalized yet, but essentially of my process and what I've done to save a lot of the steps not telling you you're going to become a bestseller, but I can either, I'll save you money one of two ways. You'll either decide it's not for you and you won't dump, you know, a bunch of money into this, or you'll save yourself with some of the research. Um, and, you know, I, I gave out some of what's in there today, but as a rule of thumb that I will tell you all, if you want, all of my books are hardback, um, which was very key for me, especially from a price point, you know, the books are $15, kind of middle of the road. I wouldn't, and I have a kid, I have all books that people have given me and I'm very, you know, um, critical of everything because obviously, you know, everybody loves, you know, their kid the best, like I do my books um, and what you're going to pay for them. So, you know, paperback options are there, but, and people talk about board books and all this stuff. And this is for a whole different discussion. Um, but think about the quality of it and what people are going to pay and, um, you know, rule of thumb, I would tell you, I always order at least 2000 copies at a time. The more you order, the cheaper it is per unit. Um, when you, so to break even, um, you have to get out there and do it yourself. But I would say to be safe between everything you need to know, um, 10 grand is probably what you end up putting into it. It is spanned out. So you can split up your payments with illustrators. You can split up your payments with shipping and, and other people may have this, you know, ways to be, um, cheaper, but, if you think about the cost of your illustrator, the cost of production, the cost of shipping, uh, the, you know, if you have to have somebody format, if you've got to pay an editor, some of these things you can find for cheap or free if you're willing to search. But um, it's, you know, it's expensive. And then again, you have 2000 books like it is hard to sell that much. Like it is a lot of work. So are you willing to do that? And are you a type of person that would go out there and sell them? And then obviously the big thing, and, and I do work in marketing and advertising. If you look at my website, I just got new pictures coming in. I haven't set it up, so don't be you know too judgmental on me here. But it is key. Your social media, you know, your brand, everything you're doing, how you're like staying aligned. Like I have my Instagram, I think I just have over a thousand followers, and it took me over two years. And I'm not an influencer. It's been very hard to get that many there. And especially if nobody knows who you are. Um, but these things are important and growing the brand and then reaching out to every person, opportunity, never be scared to ask a question or talk to somebody. Um, you never know what you may find. And, um, you know, if you want to make a book come to life, it's just kind of how it has to go.
So do you want me to keep going or is it question time? You tell me. Yeah, we can we can uh, break here for questions, but uh, thank you so much. This was all yeah. so, so informative. Really appreciate your honesty yeah. because behind the scenes is what I want people to talk about in this program. And you just did that so brilliantly. Thank you for that. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to hold yeah. up for you for all of them at the same time here. I don't know. Again, not my ugh, strength. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll just do them one at one so you can see Billy the dentist. This one is like a limited thing. I don't have a lot of these left. Um, it was really for this guy's practice. But these, my go or my golden child, and uh, you know, my youngest, I guess you could say. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll try to hold them up when we do a picture, but. Yeah, we are going to do a picture right now, but the, I, I'm going to send the links out as well. So if you want to buy his books, um, you'll be able to do that. Um, it will come to you in the thank you email. Um, and I also want to say that I am working, we are working on getting his books in the local library since he's a local author. Um, we are trying to get that into Charlotte Mecklenburg libraries. But for those of you who live in Charlotte, you know that main library is closed right now. And because they don't have the space, they are not accepting local authors donations at this point. But whenever he, his book comes into the library, I'll be sure to send you an email so you can check it out and you can read and please leave a review for him if you like the book. Um, if you do not live in Charlotte and you still want to borrow from the library, you can still use interlibrary loan uh, and borrow the book anywhere in the United States uh, if you have a public library there. So that's the plug for your book, Joe. Uh, I'm going to ask you all to pose for a group picture now uh, before we make our segue into questions. If you're comfortable turning on your camera, please do. If you're not, don't feel any pressure. <laughs> and if you, uh, Josh, if you can just tell us on a count of three or something when we need to pause. Sure, yeah, I'll give um, everyone a second to get adjusted. Um... All right, so uh, one, two, three. And I'm gonna do one more just in case. So one, two, three. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thanks so much, yeah. And you'll have the group picture too in your email if you wanna share it on social media, please feel free to do. So we're gonna make our segue into the Q&A section. Um, I did get a couple questions in the chat. Do you want to add anything before we go to that, uh, Joe? Do you want to show them the website real quick? Oh, uh, yeah, I think, can I share my screen? Yeah, you can, your co-host. Okay. All right, so my website here, let's see which way it's gonna show. All right. If everybody, I don't know, can you see it? No, no, we can't as yet. Let's see here. How about now? Mm. Still nothing? <laughs> Hold on. Uh, Let me try. Uh, why don't you just put it in the chat and then people can look it up if they want to. Sure, sure. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Okay, right. and while he does that, I'm going to segue into questions. And yeah, the first question I have is from Radhika, and she's asking how many, what is the minimum words a children's book should have? Um, Great question. Um, let's see here. I'll make sure I have it in there correctly. Um, okay, so I was always told that uh, it should be between 500 and 550 um, for the total number of children's books. But again, my first book is like 1300 words, and it is longer. And when I sell it, I tell people it's designed for breaks. Again, like, I can't tell you what Random House or Penguin is going to do if like, you know, what your book would be if they would like it, they wouldn't if it's too long, too short, whatever. I just spoke to an author one time and that's what they told me. Um, I don't know, maybe Billy the Dentist is that short, but most of them aren't. And it depends on the age range for kids too. You know, is they're learning to read a little bit longer? I personally think it's okay. When they're young, it's just like, what's going to get it done and get them to bed. So 550, I think is a rule of thumb, but 
I, you know, don't sell yourself short. I couldn't, like, I just couldn't get mine. In hindsight, I could have now gone back a little bit, but I couldn't get it as short as I wanted to still convey, like, the messaging and humor and all that stuff. Thank you. I mean, we had another children's author here um, from Norway who said that, you know, she went the self-publishing route because she wanted to own her work. She wanted to be completely in charge of how many words, how many illustrations. So if you think that way, I think the word count shouldn't bother you, you know, unless you're doing a query or something like that. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. Go ahead. Go ahead, Joe. Oh, no, it's fine. I mean, I can, I know you were just telling me which questions, so I'll just wait till. If you want to see them yourself, that's okay too. I mean, I'm just trying to mediate here. So yeah, I mean, I see, I see there was one about um, the bagel book and talk about my process for doing the bagel book. How'd you come up with the ideas or storyline live in Montreal? Montreal is actually where I had my bachelor party uh, years ago. Um, love the city, uh, especially Schwartz's up there. It was delicious, but um, okay. So the bagel book was a project that I was going to be doing with a guy here who has opened a local deli here in Charlotte. Um, we met, we talked about it and then we tried to collaborate. He's so busy opening the restaurant that, um, he just didn't have time. And I was like, well, if I want to have this by holiday season and bring it to life, I'm going to do that. And so I just, I decided I was going to do bagels, same with animals. And I was like, you know, with the ABCs, I could figure out an animal for each one bagels. I was like, all right, let's list out the flavors. Let's look how many there are. You know, I think I have like 16 in there. I'm sure I missed some creative, you know, whatever. One time somebody's like, oh, you should have something about peanut butter and jelly. I was like a peanut butter and jelly bagel. They're like, no, when you put peanut butter and jelly on, I was like, all right, this isn't about spreads. You know, I can't talk about the world of cream cheese here too. It's, you know, I mentioned cream cheese, but, um, you know, so I, I just do that. And then I'm like, okay, I put the bagel and then I try to keep it, you know, roughly to four lines. All of my books kind of read the same, you know, the rhyming, rhyming schemes are always the same. And then I find it and then I'll look up, you know, words. Like if I say, um, you know, garlic or onion, like, so I just go and find words that rhyme with these things. And then I just think about how I can put that into writing that makes sense. Um, and that is for me, that is like my skill set and, and making those things make sense. Um, you know, we all have it. Some of you might be able to actually do your own illustrations on your own. And that's, you know, another skill set you have and you save yourself a ton of money. But uh, being able to format and put things in a PDF version is going to be big, especially for production um, and understanding like, you know, the color scheme too, or somebody who knows that. So I would definitely say if you're going to get an illustrator, make sure they know how to format and they know how to, you know, update colors, um, you know, that that's used in the book so that, um, you know, it, it'll speed up that process because there is back and forth in the production side. OK, uh, let's see. Um, how long do I promote before each book? OK, so. I, this is interesting. So the first two books, I actually did a release. Um, I did them at breweries here in Charlotte because parents can drink and have a beer. They can bring the kids to a place. It's kind of a win-win for everybody. Also, when people are drinking, they tend to buy more. Um, so that works out well, but I've actually never done pre-orders on my book and I'm going to explain why. Um, delays. I'm an anxious person and I get the books made overseas and I don't want to say, hey, the books will be here on uh, April 1st and set the release up or get people to order. And then it doesn't show up until April 15th or May 1st or whatever, for whatever reason. And then people are asking about it. They've forgotten. And then they're like wondering where it is. And then you have to keep in touch with all these people. Um, but you know, it is big to, um, as soon as it's ready, let people know. And then if a whole bunch of people buy your book at one time, if you're on a platform on Amazon and Etsy, something similar. That's how you move up in the algorithms and become bestsellers is getting people to buy it at one time. Um, do I sell through local bookstores, um, independent ones? If so, do you offer them wholesale uh, price books or how do you start? Okay. So getting into the big, uh, the big stores, even online is really tough. That's where the publishers come in. I did go this route or I did explore this route with a publisher, but they couldn't produce the books as cheap as I could. Then they wanted me to purchase the books through them only. I couldn't sell to any other bookstores, but I could sell in person. Ended up not working out. Um, local bookstores and independents is where I've gone in, um, depending on the type of store. You know, if it's a bookstore, they pretty much have their set um, 
uh, percentage they take, which is about 40. Uh, if it's like a children's store, you can negotiate. So always try to negotiate. You never know. And but a lot of times they'll only take five. So I got in about 11 stores, I think, in North Carolina the first year. Every store sold out of my book. But it was such a process trying to see if they need new books. I mean, if you think about it, you know, imagine having every author checking in all the time if they need your books, keeping up. Some take consignment, some pay you up front. And I found that if I had 11 stores that took five books from me, um, you know, it's 55 books. I can sell that in a festival at a market in one day and I don't have to pay out that part. So it just depends. I mean, it's nice to not have to do the work, but I just found that I'm constantly following up and it's sometimes it's just not really worth my time. Um, but to each his own, you know, whatever you, whatever you do. Um, and then bookstore appearances, I have done a reading. I've done some, like an author kind of spotlight where they had other authors come in. It really depends on the community. One hard lesson that I have learned, and um, I'll share this with you, is that I've tried to do stuff in smaller cities, like, you know, where I'm from and, and towns, you know, especially where like a bookstore supported me. And it's never been really worth it between where I have to drive and the time, like the larger cities are just where you're going to have the best luck. It's just solely a numbers thing and where people are. Um, so um, yeah, that's that. Um, all right. Is there, uh, okay, I'll see here. Uh, thank you for the wonderful. I'm in the U S now born, brought up in India for 25 years. I've written three or four China episodes while growing up in India. What would your thoughts be about publishing it in India or here? Um, I, you know, again, I, I'm not an expert. I mean, if you can publish both places, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know, like everybody has a different concept um, and you never know what's going to stick. I mean, one thing somebody told me was like, people want TV shows and movies. And so like, what could you make something about? Right. And um we all find our stories very interesting and it just does everybody else and ask questions do and ask people you don't know these questions you know your friends are going to support you and at least at first and and they'll be you know some of them will be honest with you and i've had friends tell me like the who's hoof it's like they say too long like when i'm putting them to bed they don't have the attention span and i'm like all right you know it's good to know but you know, I was going to do, I have other books in mind and I actually had someone ask me about writing a children's book about grief. Um, this person, I did a festival with them that was in honor of their child who passed away and, you know, said there were other kids love the books and if you should do something about grief. And I said, you know, it's very important for people to learn about that. My books are always to rhyme and be funny and get people to, um, I want them to feel good, you know, and enjoy that. Like grief isn't something that you can make fun but it, it's important to learn now i do have another book in the works that is uh very politically correct and it's about um you know kids who are from all over the different countries who are different religions races you know parents that um you know maybe are a one household parent or no parents or maybe it's same sex parents or whatever and it's basically to encompass all uh different children to make them understand it's this honestly a little bit for the parents but we're not all the same we don't all look alike we don't all come from the same place but that's okay and you're going to meet people throughout your life who aren't like that but that shouldn't you know stop you from becoming friends or accepting these people so that's in the works again i've got to get these other books out um and then one is about a female superhero and then one is about um my dog and my son see dog everybody writes books about their dog um and it's uh, it's called Are You My Brother? And it's about things that look alike that are not the same and things that are the same that don't look alike. So my sons uh, who are Theo is my dog. Leo is my son, you know, because if it doesn't rhyme, I don't have the time for it. Right. Um, and so it's about them and, and Theo's journey to meet Leo and he meets these other animals or things that look alike or sound the same and, and their process. So that one will probably be next. Then. Um, the one I'm, the one before I was telling you about, then maybe the superhero one, but uh, I've got to get through to do that. So sorry, that ended up going back to me. Um, I don't think I really answered uh, the question. I think try doing it in both places. I would just maybe suggest, um, you know, uh, figuring out your shipping. Uh, so how you can do that. 
Um, I know shipping overseas is very expensive, at least from the U.S. to somewhere else. So doing some homework on that uh, would be important. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Are you going to add something? Because, because I have a couple of questions myself. Sure. Um, I just want to quickly add about the promotions part. I know that your book came out through the, you know, during the pandemic. But uh, if you have a children's book, uh, usually people go and read in schools. And it's really hard to get those as well. I mean, usually if you have kids of your own, you try to first go to the school, you know, the, wherever your child is going to school. And it's, it's hard to get, but it works. If the teachers buy the books, um, I don't know if the parents are allowed to buy the books like that, but I know that reading in school, reading, you know, book readings in school is, is a sure shot for promotions. Yeah, I've done a couple video readings um, yeah. and I've, I did donate some uh, books to a low income school, like whose parents wouldn't even buy pencils for the kids. Um, yeah, I mean, I get a lot of teachers who come through these local markets too. So check out your local market areas, whatever city you're in, you know, just start Googling it and not even just like farmer's markets. So that could be a good place for you to start. Um, anything else that, you know, local artists markets, and that's a place to where you can do it. Um, just be ready to be on your feet for hours on end and talk to every single person who comes by. I can't like emphasize that enough. You like, okay, pun intended here, but don't ever judge the book by the cover. You don't know who is actually going to be interested in purchasing a book. And though they may not be paying attention, I've had plenty of sales where they weren't even looking at me. And I just, you know, shouted something out and made a joke. They came over, talked briefly, and then they ended up buying multiple books, one of each, giving them to, as gifts. So, um, you know, don't uh, don't shy away. And, and the thing is, you know, you're right about talking to um, schools and though sometimes people may buy a book, sometimes they don't. That's just more exposure for you. People hear about it. You know, I'll throw one in a little free library and put a note in the book, you know, where people can take a picture of it or something. Explore all opportunities. Right. Yeah. Don't be shy. That's that's the whole right. thing. Don't be shy. I had another quick question about your creative process. Um, I was reading another author interview and um, the author there said she first writes, you know, pen to paper. Um, do you ever do that? Because I don't know if I, I have written a children's book too. It's lying in my desktop. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I did that first on pen to paper. Is that what your process looks like? Or do you go, do you do a pen to paper bit when you struggle with some portion of the manuscript? Do you ever use that? Um, I always use Google Documents. Um to write mine. And I'll tell you why, because you can download it on your phone. So even when you're not in front of your computer, you can add to it. So if like you're thinking about it, you just get this great line that you need to get out. Um, I do that. And then I can work on it back and forth and it automatically saves. Um, uh, typically what I do is I put on hip hop music. I have a record collection over here. I put on something I like. I'm serious about this too. This is what motivates me. It's what gets my mind going. And then I'll like write it that way. And I've said moving forward, I'm going to write my books to music. So that if I want to do audio or go the TikTok route or something where I have to get out of my own self-conscious and um, do that, which I need to do, um, I can write them to music and it's funny. And uh, there's ways to do that, too, because then you can go take a song lyric and to, for your cadence or for your rhyming and then you can put in your own words and then you can just do it over and over. Um, but that's it for me. I mean, I just hip hop music, whether it's exercising, when I'm working, when I'm writing a book, that has always been, you know, a motivating factor for me. Thank you. Thank you. That was really yeah. helpful. Yeah. Is there any other questions that I'm missing out in the chat? I'm sorry, you can't unmute and ask, but you can put it in the chat and I'll ask them for you. Anything else you want to know? Favorite food, favorite color, what kind of dog I have, in case you want to write a book about them. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if, and if not, that's okay. I mean, the one thing that I'll just leave everybody with. Um, there's, this, there's another question, Joe. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, all right. How do, I raise, how do I raise funds for my book? Uh, well, starting out, I mean, you just got to dig from your own pocket, your own savings. You know, if you work save and then set some money aside. I mean, there's just no getting around that. And then as you start to make money, start putting aside, you know, are you going to have to order more books? Do you want to do another one? Um, splitting up payments where you can. Um, there's not a ton 
of opportunity. You know, like when you order your books, you got to pay for them. You know, I mean, I think you can wait till they, they get shipped or something, but um, it's, you know, just spread out, you know, with your pay attention to your money and plan. Um, you just mentioned TikTok. How do you use the platform? So there's this new thing that I was thinking about doing, um, and I'll share this because I haven't done it, and it's not like proprietary. There's a new thing called Book Talk, T-O-K, um, and it's where people do book reviews. And so I thought about doing this in my own kind of format. I'm not going to give away that secret, but um, and then also sharing my book. So doing other people's books and then mine as well. I guess this has become a big thing. I mean, anything like this, it's all organic um, is the obstacle of you know just building that following building people who are interested in it like we all think our idea is great you know it's like everybody thinks their kid is the cutest but does everybody else and um you know how do you get over that so i think that's you know very key um for people to know um and then you know same thing with it you can connect instagram and tiktok and facebook so you can be reaching multiple demographics at once just making sure things are aligned. Like right now, my Facebook and when I post on Instagram, it goes to Facebook as well. Though my Instagram is Joe Garrick's Children's Books. My uh, Facebook is Whose Hoof Is That? Because that's what I started with. Um, so that would be one thing is, you know, talking about somebody just asked about the um, greatest obstacles. I guess I'd say uh, one of is planning. Like, do you, I never planned to do more than one book. It was just to see if I could do it and if I can make it come to life. And so I did all my LLCs and my branding and everything is whose hoof is that? Well, obviously I moved past that. And then, so it's changing and redoing and that's added a lot of work. Uh, the other thing too is like selling the books. I can't tell you, I have tried um, multiple online platforms, you know, talk, like I don't really, you need an agent, I think, to get in with publishers and I haven't fully explored that route. Um, there is just, you know, there's like the Dolly Parton book club, right. That you can, kids can get free books from. They talk about this at the hospital. You know, when you have a baby, I've had friends tell me about it, reached out to them. I got told no. Um, cause I'm not through them. I have reached out to so many platforms with multiple books and every, I have been told by every, no, by every one of them. Uh, largest order of books I've ever had, I sold to a hospital where I had the baby and they bought 46 books for me. Um, and I asked because I was there and I was walking around and I said, why not? All they're going to tell me is no, they're selling children's books there. Might as well see if they'll sell mine. I'm having a baby here. I'm already paying them. Um, so, I mean, it's hard, you know, you look at what 40, I wish I could show you guys what my garage looks like, but like I have thousands of books in my garage from reordering and, and what that looks like. And it can be like, um, like it should be motivating, but sometimes it's not You're like, how am I going to get through these like 50 books in a box? Like, you know, maybe on a good day, I sell two boxes and then I got to wait weeks to try this again. Like, you know, patience is an obstacle too. And that's probably one of my strongest ones. Um, Okay. Uh, what is, what is the writing process, time, finances, et cetera? Uh, everybody's writing process is different. Same with time, you know, the, and then finding an illustrator, you know, you can't really go to an illustrator without a finished product. I've learned that the hard way. Um, you know, you want to make sure that it's done because they don't know if you're ever going to do it. And then again, um, how, you know, how are you going to pay them? What's your payment thing like? And I'll, if you guys want to reach out to me, if you're interested in doing the course with me, where I'll like give you every single detail, I can do that. Um, and I'll break it down for you. It's basically, I set it up over two, one hour sessions, how I did it. One is explaining the process. Um, the one's kind of talks through some of the finance paying, you know, some of this stuff. And then I have other options to where I can help you do everything else. Um, I just haven't really necessarily published it yet because I just have, you know, I just had a baby. So like, you know, and I have a regular job too. So time isn't, uh, you know, just readily available for me. Um, and then, you know, I can, and then from that to answer the question, I can do, you know, explain process time, my finances, you know, those, those things. Thank you. Um, I think we'll wrap this up now with uh, sure. answered a lot of questions. And like you said, 
Uh, I'm going to send his email out. Feel free to reach out to him. Uh, he's happy to answer questions if you, you know, you don't have the time here. But thank you so much, Joe. This was great. Very insightful. Yeah. Very honest. And it gives us the confidence that, you know, yes, you're like, just go and, you know, just put yourself out there. <laughs> it's not that bad. You can do it. it yeah. Really yeah, no, it, re it really is. And again, you know, just sometimes in life, take a chance. Like if this is important to do it, do it. Um, and for anybody who's here in Charlotte, um, you know, you can look at my Instagram. It's the same as the website, just Joe Garrick's children's books. Uh, let me know. I'll let you know what markets I'm at. And if you're ever interested in doing one of these courses, we can go meet in person and I'll talk you through it. It's basically like a 19, 20 point process. Um, and just getting this stuff done to, you know, at least save you some time and money.